Okay, so uh, you know, I'm going to paraphrase a question I was asked. To what extent can I transcend uh, all, all physical reality and, and get what I want? Uh, sort of like, for example, um, I think there was someone mentioned something brilliant, like, you know, can I cancel my belief that I one day die, not die or something like that, you know, so li live eternally forever on this thing. I think that's a great, a great one. Okay, so the, the, let's say the thing with, um, now you've got to understand, um, you've got to sort of see that this world is based on limitation, limiting ideas, and it's a kind of, um, it's a kind of a virtual reality of the seeming idea that there's limited people that can interact with each other or, or, of limitation. I, I, I'll try and articulate this. Imagine, um, okay, and I've shared before, you'll see it in my other videos about my white light spiritual experience where the world disappeared, time disappeared, all color and contrast disappeared in just infinite love and light. And that's all there was. And then when I came back into this world, you know, color existed, there were different states of bliss and flow or states of fear and being in the body. But this, uh, this almost experience of contrast and separation starts to exist. So um, I do go along with, um, with I mean, like Jesus, like, let's say this is my view of what Jesus said, that this is, a, you know, purgatorial realm. While you're still sort of experiencing in this realm, in a body with limitation and limiting ideas of you being limited by the body being limited, the life of the body being limited, and uh, others being limited in bodies and, and personalities. So that's all uh, limitation, believe all of that while you're in this sort of uh, purgatorial domain, purgatory to let go. I'd say, what is purgatory? I'll give a, my definition for today. Um, purgatory is one is in a realm where you can undo all spiritual errors. Uh, it's a place of undoing. So so if, if Jesus sort of was sort of saying this is purgatory, it's not quite hell, but it's not quite, you know, the infinite realms above or the celestial levels above. Or if Buddha said, the only way you can escape from this world, old age, suffering and death is through enlightenment, um, you know, to transcend uh, bodies, age, death, um, suffering, uh, but, you know, and to let go of all attachments in this world. So, uh, and then you reach a place where you're beyond it. So it does bring in the end of question, like if I'm a spiritual advanced spiritual seeker and I wanna live for, I don't know, 700 years by just canceling my belief. Well, I think, you know, because this world is based in time and limitation, uh, shall we say time limitation, you know, I still haven't, you know, in order to clear something, generally speaking, my experience of clearing something, is it in time I have to clear the belief system and the repressed feelings and transcend it until I no longer experiencing it? And usually what's witnessed is it disappears from consciousness. And I've been lucky so far with all the cancelling I've done with the three main ones, kidney failure, gout and asthma. As I did the cancelling and the field of feelings with those, it just so seemed when more or less when internally I didn't feel any effects of kidney failure and I, it didn't bother me. And when I didn't feel any effects of limited breathing and it didn't bother me and the exhaustion started to lift for kidney failure, it just so happened uh, it was witnessed in the world that the hospital department said to me, oh, your lungs actually are normal when you blew into that thing. And actually we're discharging you today. So you don't need you to come back. You haven't got asthma. And it seemed as um, as I was feeling out my gout and doing all the transcending work and cancelling my belief in gout, it just so and then the attacks were happening less often and less frequently and less severely. It was like one day I hadn't had a gout attack for a long time. I, I, I forgot I had gout and the rheumatology clinic said, oh, you don't need to, uh, you were discharging from the rheumatology clinic. And as I felt out the feelings and counts of my belief in kidney failure, so the idea with transcending is not really to the pure, pure way of saying transcending is not, or the, the enlightened way is not to have an effect in the world. It's like the world is kind of an irre irrelevance, whether the body survives or not, whether the teeth stay clean or not. But I would say that many, um, like with Hawkins, 
and spiritual work. Humans suffer while they're still in this state of believing they're a body, um, and they they like other they're attached to other bodies, and uh, and they want to have physical outcomes in time and space in this world uh, exist. So. Uh, that they are real and they want you know to live for 600 years they want to live and never have to brush their teeth again so if i would say at, at, as you go to those most advanced levels whether the body survives or not becomes irrelevant um and then but generally the principle spiritually is that when you've transcended inside as long as there's divine permission or god's permission if you like uh, and there's enough time to do the spiritual work because you don't know when you start spiritual work there's a few things like um i started you know like people you know I, you know and i think this is a great question um i sometimes use glasses and people will see my videos with me wearing glasses and i talk about canceling beliefs so it might look like i'm a hypocrite so um uh but you know the thing with that is anyone who's done canceling beliefs and witnessed miracles is it does take time and practice to get rid of something and and the idea really was not to affect change in the world purely, but is to disappear it from one's own consciousness so it doesn't exist for you any longer. Uh, so it no longer has a negative effect or hooks you out of a state of bliss. So generally speaking, the principle is when you disappear it on the in internally, uh, there usually is something on the external which facilitates that. But it's not, it's it's like whether that's allowed or not, the, the, there is a level of higher you say God's will, as to whether God's will will allow that to happen in this lifetime, because there's a multitude of people who are experiencing different things, and and it wouldn't be for the highest good to do those. So I would say, generally speaking, it is a. Uh, is, I would say, if I was describing it at the lowest level, if you want to get rid of something, as long as you've got enough time, it depends how deep and how much work you do. Generally speaking, it will get rid of. Is it absolute? Well. I could say like, well, if you've got a deep belief, it's going to need a lot of spiritual practice and you haven't got enough time in this lifetime to get rid of it. So I could sort of uh, contextualize it in that way. Um, but is there a scenario where you're not allowed to get rid of that? I'd say yes, you know, I mean, like, what's the motive? I mean, for these things to happen, there has to be a, a heavenly motive. Otherwise, the universe is not going to get away. I mean, like, Let's say I say I'm going to cancel my belief in death of the body and I want to live for 600 years. What's my motive in doing that? Because ultimately uh, there, there is a higher intelligence God in charge. So me want, if that's an ego motive, a vanity, um, then, you know, um, then it, I may not have the permission. It's like some higher authority blocks me from doing that because it's not coming from... I think uh, when um, one is at a high level of consciousness in this world, so seemingly, and the advanced miracles occur, there is also divine permission. And if you like, there's a higher wisdom why those things are allowed, and sometimes why things might not be allowed. But generally speaking, like, why don't I, I think this is a good question, people should ask me, like, why are you wearing glasses and you're teaching cancelling beliefs? I think that that should be asked of me. And, you know, like, at the moment, I spend every day about five seconds cancelling my belief in bad eyesight. And I have other things like my dad and his suffering and other areas around finances, which are actually affecting me and which I spend hours cancelling and surrendering. And the, the, the fuzzy eyesight, I can't be bothered. I haven't really got the time to do that work. So I'll, I'll put a pair of glasses on. So, but yes, I think it does bring the question of being a hypocrite, you know, or t or being an inspiration for your students. I think that does a, that is important. And sometimes a uh, teacher can be making an error, not if you're teaching uh, people how to lose weight and you're like morbidly obese, you know, hopefully a mentor will say, look, I mean, there is something a bit weird going on. <laughs> you know, I mean, someone could say to me, look, hey, you're teaching cancer and beliefs and you're wearing glasses. I mean, is that, is that I, what are you saying to your students? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm being upfront, you know, I haven't got the time to cancel it and do the work on that. I've got other more important fish to fry. It, there is a, a time requirement and for things that don't bother me that much, I'd rather um, just put the glasses on. I haven't got the time to get down to that and to clearing that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna stop there. I've babbled on a lot from this video.